Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to share this lovely textured beanie pattern with you. The pattern is worked bottom up and the stitch pattern is a simple one row repeat with decreases at the top. You will even find a matching scarf video on my channel so don't forget to check that out. Today I'll be showing you how to make these hats in an adult size small or medium. If you want to make it in any other size, don't forget to check out the free written pattern on my blog and you will find the link in the description box below and pinned to the very first comment. So now let's see what we need to make these lovely hats. To make this hat, I used Premier Basics DK Weight Yarn in colors Mocha, Linen and the pink is Light Mauve. It is a size 3 lightweight DK yarn and comes with 300, uh, 306 yards in a skein. It takes you less than a skein to make the hat in adult size. Along with this DK weight yarn, I used a four millimeter G size crochet hook. So gather your supplies and let's get started. Chain 12 to start making your hat band. This hat is worked bottom up, so we will work the hat band first. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Now let's work the first row. For that, work a single crochet into the second chain from your hook. This is the first and this is the second. So into that work a single crochet. Work a single crochet into each chain across all the way to the end. And at the end of this row you will have 11 single crochet stitches. So now I have completed row one. So let's begin row two. To begin row two, chain one, turn. And in this row, we will start working into the back loops only. Every stitch has two loops, a front loop and a back loop. So when you work into the back loop only, insert your hook under just the loop at the back like that and then complete your single crochet stitches. So work a single crochet in the back loop only of the first stitch. Again a single crochet into the back loop only of the next stitch. A single crochet into the back loop of the next. Keep working in back loop all the way until you have one stitch left. Continue in the back loop, making single crochet stitches all the way until you have one stitch left or until you have completed 10 single crochet stitches. I now have just one stitch left and I have completed 10 single crochets so far. So in this last stitch I will go under both the loops like a regular single crochet. So that brings us to the end of row 2 and row 2 also will have 11 single crochet stitches. Now let's begin row 3, chain 1, turn. Again, row 3 is a repeat of row 2, so one single crochet in the back loop of the first stitch, one single crochet in the back loop of each stitch across until you have just one stitch left. Working in the back loops only will give you that ribbed texture for your hat band. 
So I now have only one stitch left and into that stitch I will work under both the loops and complete my very last 11th single crochet stitch. Now go ahead and keep repeating row 3 until your hat band measures 18 inches without stretching. Once your ribbing is 18 inches long without stretching, we will join the two ends together into a circle. Now bring the foundation chain side close to this end and we will slip stitch the two ends together. Begin by tightening the loop on your hook and insert your hook under that beginning tail or that slip knot. You should start at the very corner for a cleaner finish and then complete your first slip stitch. Now go under the stitch on your last row and under the free loop on the foundation chain side and complete a slip stitch. Now again go under both the loops of the stitch on this side and under the free loop on the other side to complete your slip stitch. Keep doing that all the way to the end. And now we are at the very corner. Go under both the loops, the corner stitch, and then the last loop on the other side. So this is how the seam looks once we do the slip stitch. The projection looks a little bigger than the other ribbings. So I like to flip my work like that. So now the seam is more invisible. Now let us work the base single crochet round where we will distribute 110 single crochet stitches around the ribbing. For that we will use 4 markers and divide this ribbing into 4 equal parts so it gets easier for us to distribute our stitches. So let's place the markers. The first marker goes into the seam itself and now you just have to eyeball it and make sure the seam is in the middle. You can also count the ridges and make sure there are equal ridges on each side if you want. I'm just eyeballing it, you know, just making sure it's in the middle and then I will place one in this corner, one in that fold and one in this corner. and one right behind the front marker. So that will divide our ribbing into four equal parts like that. And in each part we will work in the first part between the markers we will work 27 stitches in the next one 28 in the next 27 and in the next 28 again and then slip stitch to the very first stitch that will give us a total of 110 single crochet stitches and that is what we are looking for so just eyeball it and another thing you can do if you have a difficult time distributing stitches is you can count the ridges on this and uh, kind of estimate how many increases you will have to add like you will calculate one single crochet for the ridge one for the valley between two ridges one here one in the gap and then see how many extra you will need so let's do that for the first section together so you get an idea of how I do that so now let's count the ridges in the first section and estimate the number of increases we might have to add so uh, this is where we have the seam so we can do one single crochet here and one more here so that will be two then three one, one on the ridge that is the third one one here four five six seven eight nine ten eleven 
12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 and if we count the marked point that is 25 and we're going to add two more to this section to make it 27 so between this marker and this marker we will have to add two increases so we can do like maybe one inch apart one here and one here may just have to eyeball it so um, instead of working one single crochet into one of the valleys here we will work two so that was that is how we will add the two increases so let's begin working into the first section and we're going to work 27 single crochet in this section now take off the marker so we can work conveniently chain one and work a single crochet the first single crochet you can place a marker that first single crochet <coughs> sorry now we do have space for one more single crochet right next to it so we work one more and then one into the next ridge one into the valley between the ridges take care to go a little deeper than the very edge I like to go in a quarter inch or so so not so as not to leave a big hole now one into the ridge if it leaves a big hole change the position of your hook so we're working one into each ridge and one into each of the valleys between the ridges that leaves a hole so I will try to go a little bit underneath or into the loop like that now into the valley and uh, I think it's time for an increase the first increase so I will add one more into the same place and then one into the next ridge valley one into the next keep on doing like that and after an inch or so add another increase I think it's time for another increase so I will add two here and one in each of the remaining ridges and valleys to complete 27 single crochets in total so now I haven't worked at the marked point I will just go back and count and make sure I have 27 if I don't I will work one at the marked point so now go ahead and see if you have 27 or not and we will work in the next section so I counted my stitches and I only have 26 so far so I will add one more at the marked point like we decided earlier and make that 27 Now in the next section, you can place back the marker there if you want. Now I placed my marker back in my 27th stitch. So that belongs to the first section. And when we count, we will count from the stitch right after the marked stitch for the next section. Again, go ahead and count the number of ridges and valleys and estimate the number of increases you have to add to yours it could be different than mine because we all distribute our markers differently by eyeballing it so if you have if you need three increases to get 28 the section has to have 28 stitches so go ahead and distribute 28 sections to, I mean, i'm sorry 28 stitches in the second section 27 in the third and again 28 in the very last section and come back and join me and i'll show you how to end the round so i have worked single crochet stitches into all my four sections and reached back near 
the seam and I want you to know that I did have to add four to five increases to some sections and that's totally fine as long as you're distributing the number of stitches I said that is 27 28 27 and 28 just eyeball it it doesn't really matter in the end so um, that's something to keep in mind it's okay to add up to like four to five increases in each section and now let's end this round with a slip stitch into the marked single crochet which is our very first single crochet stitch so that completes the base single crochet round now go ahead and remove all the markers before you start round one of the textured stitch pattern now to start the first round of the stitch pattern do not turn at the end of the base single crochet round and you begin with a chain three that will count as our very first double crochet into the same stitch as our chain three into that that gap you see there work another double crochet chain one and work two double crochet into the next stitch that is one and two so that completes the first repeat now skip the next three stitches one two and three and into the next stitch work two double crochet stitches chain one and work two double crochet stitches into the next stitch skip the next three stitches and work two double crochet into the next stitch chain one two double crochet into the next stitch skip the next three stitches one two and three and work two double crochet into the next stitch chain one and two double crochet into the very next stitch keep repeating this that is skip the next three stitches work two double crochet into the next chain one and two double crochet into the next stitch skip the next three stitches two double crochet in the next chain one and then two double crochet in the next stitch keep repeating this all the way around until you have three stitches left before the beginning chain three you made i now have only three stitches left one two and three and now we can end the round by slip stitching to the top of our beginning chain three right there into the top of that chain three work a slip stitch to complete round one now if you count the number of repeats around your work you should have 22 repeats around the hat and now to begin round two we will turn our work slip stitch in to the next double crochet And work a front post single crochet into the next double crochet before the chain one space to work a front post single crochet you have to insert your hook behind the post of that double crochet so insert your hook into the gap between the stitches and bring it up through the next gap pull up a loop and then complete your single crochet so that is your front post single crochet I'll show that once again if you're a beginner that will help so insert your hook through the gap between the stitches and bring it up through the next gap so you have now inserted your hook behind the post pull up a loop and then yarn over pull through to complete your front post single crochet now chain two this front post single crochet and the chain two will count as our first front post double crochet 
into the next adjacent chain one space work a v stitch a v stitch is a double crochet chain one and a double crochet worked into the same space so work a v stitch a double crochet chain one and a double crochet completes our v stitch and we worked up and we worked that into the chain one space now work a front post double crochet into the next double crochet for that yarn over like you start your regular double crochet insert your hook into the first space the chain one space and up through the next space pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two like working a regular double crochet so that completes our first front post i will be working more front post so you can learn if you are new to working front post stitches now skip the next two double crochet stitches this one and this one and into the next double crochet that is a double crochet right before the chain one space work a front post double crochet again yarn over insert into the space before the double crochet bring it up through the space after it pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two to complete your front post double crochet now into the chain one space right after work a v stitch which is a double crochet chain one and a double crochet all worked into the same chain one space into the next double crochet we will work a front post now skip the next two double crochet and work into the double crochet before the chain one space so we are skipping the double crochets in between and the only two double crochets we will work into are the double crochets before and after that chain one space into those we will work a front post double crochet and into the chain one space itself we will be working a v stitch so skip the next double crochet work a front post in the next double crochet before the chain one space a v stitch into the chain one space a double crochet in a front post double crochet into the next double crochet right after the chain one space now keep repeating this that is skip the next two double crochet a front post double crochet v stitch a front post double crochet and so on until you have two double crochet stitches left and i'll come back and show you how to end the row and the round sorry i now have only two double crochet stitches left so i will end the round by slip stitching to the top of the beginning chain two so that brings us to the end of round two so let's work one more round together which will be a repeat of round two again so no chain one just turn your work work a slip stitch into the next double crochet work a front post single crochet into the next double crochet insert your hook into the gap break up through the next gap and complete your single crochet chain two that counts as our first front post double crochet a v stitch into the next chain one space that is a double crochet chain one and a double crochet a front post double crochet into the next double crochet skip the next two double crochet stitches it will be pushed behind and into the next double crochet before the chain one work a front post double crochet stitch work a v stitch into the next a front post double crochet into the next skip the next two double crochet pushed behind and work a front post into the next double crochet a v stitch into the next chain one space a double a front post double crochet into the next double crochet skip the next two double crochets push behind and work a front post double crochet into the next keep repeating this all the way until you have just two double crochet stitches left i now have just two double crochet stitches left 
they are pushed behind so it might be a little harder to see on the side so make sure you have two behind and then end this round with a slip stitch to the top of your beginning chain two of the round so that brings us to the end of round three and now again to start the next round the two things to keep in mind are you turn your work and you start without a beginning chain and slip stitch directly into the next double crochet so keep repeating this round until your hat is eight inches tall from the bottom of your ribbing and come back and i'll show you how to add the decrease rows and shape your hat at the crown i have now completed 16 rows of the double crochet rows after the base single crochet row and my hat is now eight inches tall from the base of the ribbing it is likely that you might need one row extra or one row less depending on what your gauge is so it doesn't matter as long as your hat is eight inches tall and my last round ended inside the hat that is on the wrong side this is where I ended my last round so all the decreased rows after this will be worked only on the right side so if you ended on the inside of the hat like me you will turn your work and start working on the right side of the hat and this applies to all the three decreased rows that we're going to work now we will be working all the three on the right side or the outside of your hat so if you turn your work because you ended on the wrong side you will start your row as usual by slip stitching into the next stitch that is how you will start your first decrease round now if you ended your last round on the outside already and your hat was eight inches tall and you had to stop there then you won't turn your work because you want to work your decreased rounds on the outside or the right side of the hat in that case you won't have a slip stitch so if you ended your round your last round on the outside of your work or the right side of your hat and you did not have to turn your work you will not work a slip stitch because you're already on top of the right double crochet and from now on the decrease rounds will be the same whether you ended on the right side you had to turn or you didn't or you did not have to turn from now on you will just follow the steps ahead so go ahead and work a front post single crochet in the next double crochet before the chain one space and chain two so that counts as your first front post double crochet place a marker on top of that beginning chain two now don't work a v-stitch into the chain one space just directly work a front post double crochet into the next double crochet sorry now skip the next two double crochet stitches and work a front post double crochet in the next double crochet and skip the chain one space and work another one into the next front post double crochet so what we are doing in this decreased round is we are not working a v-stitch between the two front post double crochet stitches so go ahead and skip two double crochet and work a front post double crochet in the next skip the chain one space work a front post double crochet in the next double crochet skip the next two double crochet stitches and work a front post double crochet into the next skip the chain one space and work a front post double crochet into the next skip the next two double crochet stitches and work a front post into the double crochet before the chain one space skip the next chain one space and work a front post into the next double crochet after the chain one space 
keep repeating this all the way until you have two double crochet stitches left and you reach near the marker. I now have only two double crochet stitches left before the marker that is this one and this one and chain two is worked into this stitch and the chain two is horizontal that's why we marked it so we can identify it at the end of the round so go ahead and slip stitch into the top of beginning chain two where you placed the marker to end this first decrease round now you will have 44 front post double crochet stitches around your hat two in each of the 22 repeats now to begin round two directly work a front post single crochet in the next double crochet remember we did not turn at the end of our round directly work a front post single crochet in the next double crochet chain two place a marker in that second chain now we will work a front post double crochet two together across the next two stitches to do that yarn over insert your hook behind the post of the first double crochet pull up a loop yarn over pull through two now keep the remaining two loops on your hook yarn over again start the next double crochet insert your hook under the back of the next post pull up a loop yarn over pull through two now you have three loops on your hook yarn over pull through all the remaining three loops on your hook and you have worked a front post double crochet two together which is a decrease that joins two stitches into one now work a front post double crochet two together across the next two double crochet stitches yarn over insert your hook behind the post of the next double crochet pull up a loop yarn over pull through two keep the remaining two on your hook yarn over insert your hook behind the post of the next double crochet pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through the remaining three loops on your hook now keep working a front post double crochet two together across the next two double crochet all the way until you have just one double crochet stitch left before the marked chain two I now have only one double crochet stitch left before the chain two. This double crochet you see is actually the stitch into which the beginning chain two has been worked. So you only have one double crochet left into that work a front post double crochet. And now slip stitch into that marked beginning chain two. So that brings us to the end of the second decrease round. Now you can see that the hat is finally taking shape and shrinking at the top. Now we will work on our very last decrease round. To work the very last decrease round, work a single crochet in the next stitch, place a marker in that single crochet. work a single crochet decrease across the next two stitches to work a single crochet decrease pull up a loop in each of the next two and now yarn over and pull through all the three loops on your hook to complete your single crochet decrease work a single crochet in the next stitch and a single crochet decrease across the next two don't accidentally work into the same stitch 
because you see a space there so make sure you're working into the next one into the next two you will work a single crochet two together to join them into one pull up a loop in each of the next two stitches yarn over pull through all the three loops now work one single crochet in the next stitch this is the same stitch so don't work into that into the next work a single crochet a single crochet decrease across the next two a single crochet in the next a single crochet decrease across the next two stitches a single crochet stitch in the next single crochet two together or single crochet decrease across the next two a single crochet in the next single crochet decrease across the next two a single crochet and a single crochet decrease across the next two one single crochet in the next and one single crochet in the very last one that's a slip stitch and then you slip stitch into the very first stitch so that completes your very last decrease round and you can see that there's only a small hole left at the top of your hat so now you can fasten off with a long tail for cinching your hat at the top a half yard tail would be good so now let's go ahead and sew the top shut for that turn your hat inside out and we'll cinch on the wrong side or the inside of the hat thread that long tail you left through a yarn needle and go in and out through the stitches of the last round Do that until you go all around and pull to close that hole. Make a couple of knots and Securely wave this tail in. Go in and out through the stitches. Now back. And you can trim your yarn. The next step is to add a button to the top so we can attach our pom pom. So sew a button to the top. I now got both the tails inside the hat and I'm going to tie under the buttons like that 
and trim. Now turn your hat right side out. Now use a bigger hook to grab the loop on your pom-pom and bring it inside your hat and pull it over your buttons like that to hook it. So now your pom-pom is attached and go ahead and weave that last tail in. So this is the last step, just weaving in the beginning tail along the inside of your hat. Going in and out through the ribbing for an inch. Go back again, in and out, once more, work your way up for an inch and then you can trim your yarn. So that completes your beautiful textured beanie.